Good morning and welcome to my kitchen. I have got the most incredible homemade spinach pesto pasta recipe for you. It is delicious. So, fresh pesto, but made with spinach. So, spinach is full of iron, it's super good for you. Really easy to get hold of these days in the shops, and it is delicious. It is a great way to make something healthy and lean and mean and delicious. So, we'll start off first. We'll get our spinach, and you, you always need plenty of it. Now, the recipe, if you scan the QR code along the bottom, it will take you to petersidwell.com. You can get all my recipes there. You can also download our free app and you get them all there as well. You get all the TV programs, you get the recipes, you get everything all in one simple free app that you can download. It's on Apple and Google. So, spinach in, and then we want two cloves of garlic. So, I'll, you want decent sized cloves, but what you've got to remember is when you use raw garlic in a recipe, if you make enough for, say, today and maybe tomorrow or the next day, the garlic gets stronger, okay? So you've got to be a little bit mindful on how much garlic you put in today because in two days' time, it will be very strong. You can always add more garlic. So just go with two small sort of cloves to begin with. And then if you come back to it, add a bit more if you want to. Can you use things like garlic powder and that if you don't Ooh, have... Garlic powder's nasty. <laughs> okay. It's really nasty. No, you need fresh... Particularly for this, garlic powder is one of those things that's quite good, like if you maybe... If you added it to um, maybe bread flour, something like that. Right. Because it's dry, it's going into dry. Yeah. And like onion powder, that's quite good for that sort of job. Yeah. I mean, uh, you find a lot of people who do like rubs and things like that for big joints of meat tend to use garlic powder, but I'm, I'm not a massive fan. I like fresh. Now, we've just had Christmas. I'm sure most of you have got half a bag of salted peanuts kicking around the cupboard. We always do after Christmas. So I'm gonna use peanuts for my pesto today. You could use walnuts, you could use pine nuts. However, pine nuts are really expensive at the moment. Cashew nuts work really well. Almonds work well. It, what happens is you get, you get a creaminess almost from using the nuts. Now these are salted, so I'm not gonna add any seasoning to this because it's already on the nuts, okay? So add those in. Now I've got pecorino cheese here. You could also use Parmesan if you want. Absolutely no problem at all. You could even use like a really good vintage cheddar if you want. You know, if you've got some left in the fridge from Christmas, that's absolutely fine. You want quite a sharp cheese, okay? So, you know, you don't want to be using, I don't know, you don't want to be using brie or anything like that. You want a sort of a dried, a good mature cheddar or a good mature Lancashire or something like that. Get it used up. It almost gives that sort of sharpness to it is what we're looking for. Okay. Do you like a bit of pesto, Emily? I do, especially fresh. Yeah, I Whatever think one, fresh, you can't, back. yeah. Those jars that sit on the shelf, they are not pesto. They're sort of green sludge, if you ask me. Fresh pesto is the best. And if you can sneak loads of spinach in and make it really good for you as well, even better. Tell you what I have forgotten to do, Emily. Get our pasta in. Oh. Okay, so I've got a pan of boiling water on here. Now it needs to be salted boiling water. Doesn't it, Carlos? You say so. <laughs> so I like to cook my pasta in salted boiling water. I like it to be as salty as seawater. And that's like a layer of seasoning. I've got 400 grams of dried spaghetti here, 100 grams per person, it'll speed for no problem. And if there's any left over, we would make the most incredible um, like pasta frittata, spaghetti frittata. 
um, which I've got a recipe for on my website. So check that out as well for any leftovers. So in with our pasta. That's going to take nine minutes to cook. That's it. You want it al dente. You want a tiny bit of bite about it. If you overcook it, it becomes incredibly starchy and soggy and stodgy. You just want that little bite. Okay. Right. Where did we get up to? So we've got spinach, we've got garlic, we've got peanuts in there, and I've got some pecorino. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit of black pepper, not a lot, don't need much. I'm going to add a few sprigs of basil, because I've got it. If you haven't got it, don't worry. It's not going to not work. Don't use dried. Dried basil shouldn't be a thing. It tastes of nothing. Okay. And then extra virgin olive oil, we're gonna go in with. In it goes. We can always add more in a minute. So really, pesto is about preserving. So it comes, uh, the original dish comes from Genoa in Italy, just at the very top, just before you get to the French Riviera. Um, it's the home of basil pesto, and it's just delicious. So it's inspired by that, and it was all about preserving the summer's basil for later in the season. So, I'm just gonna blend it now. Off we go. Right, look at that. How green and delicious does that look? My kids absolutely love pesto. It's really interesting, like, as a kid, you would never want to eat green food, would you? Kids no. dodge green food for some reason, yet they love pesto and it's green. I don't get it, but anyway, as long as they eat it, then that's all good. But this, this pesto will work really well. You can even spread this maybe on a little piece of uh, cod or haddock or something like that and put it in the fridge in the oven and just cook that really simply. You can use it in sandwiches, you could use it on a pasta dish, you can use it on bread dough, all sorts of stuff. So it is really versatile. Now, this is controversial, this bit. I got shouted at in Italy for this. Did you? Oh, I did. I got a proper rollick in for this. I like a little bit of lemon juice in my pesto because I think it balances the richness of the nuts and the oil. How, and the cheese. However, don't like it, don't put it in. Any Italians out there, don't shout at me. You've already fallen out with me because I put spinach in there instead of basil, but um, <laughs> it's just about taking that iconic recipe of pesto and playing with the ingredients and making it like really healthy and good for you for January, because that's what we're all trying to do, isn't it? So, now if you have any questions at all about the recipe today or any other recipes, post them in the comments below and I will answer the questions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was just gonna say, do you have to use olive oil? Um, or can you, you don't use... have to use olive oil, but it gets a nice flavor. It, it's nicer, extra virgin olive oil, but you can use, you could use rapeseed oil if you want, you could use a pomace oil, but uh, not, not vegetable oil. No, anything. well, I wouldn't because it's, it'll just taste greasy. Yeah. Um, Carlos is frowning at you because he's Spanish and he's olive oil through and through, aren't you, mate? <laughs> so we're just going to let that run through. Now, what I am going to do... I'm just giving the Italians another reason to hate me at the moment. <laughs> If you put a little bit of bread into your pesto, what it does is it takes the oil and it takes the spinach and it takes the lemon juice and it kind of sucks them together and binds it a little bit. Um, and it is, again, this isn't traditional by any means, but I think it just helps bring the pesto together a little bit. So I'm just going to take half a crust or half a slice, I'll eat the rest and blend that in, and that will just glue it together. Okay, so while this pesto has been blending, I had a stroke of genius, so you'll have to bear with me. Now, 
I've got a little bit of feta in the fridge left over. And, and in my little mind, I'm thinking creaminess to my pesto, spinach, feta, mmm, garlic. Sound good? Yeah. So I'm going to add a spoonful of feta into my pesto. Totally optional. But I think it's going to be really, really good. It's going to make it creamier and delicious. So in with that. We're going to have a little taste now, Emily. Yay. Always the best time, best isn't it? Part of the video. Right, and that's why we didn't add all the bread to the pesto. I didn't wonder what you were getting the bread for. I thought, oh, we're getting a taste. Wee. <laughs> so th at this point, this is where we have a taste. Emily gets into position. <laughs> Well, I'm Carlos, have a little taste. Always. And this, like when you're making, if you're making this at home, right, you know, this point is where you taste and you decide, has it got enough lemon? Has it got enough garlic? Is it sharp enough? Does it need pepper? It shouldn't need salt because I've used salted peanuts, but if you were just using plain out of the packet, walnuts, pine nuts, whatever, you may need to add a little bit of seasoning. But remember, we've got salted boiling water in our pasta, so you will always need to rain that salt back on this. What do we think? Do we like? Yeah. No, no adjustments? Happy? A bit more lemon? No. Sorry, Italy. Oh, no, the Spaniards. No, no. Too late, it's gone in. A <laughs> little bit. Oh, that's good, that. Let's just get that pip out. Okay, let's give it one last little blast and then we're ready to go. That's it. Right. So we're going to put that onto there. Let's get rid of this. Okay. That's like one of those things that you just eat with a spoon. Oh, yes. What other flavours can you do? Now, now, actually, so I've spent quite a lot of time in Italy and they do make different types of pesto out there. Now, obviously, your basil pesto is your traditional one. They also do a sun-dried tomato pesto, which is really nice. So you, you take out the green herbs and you put some sun-dried tomatoes, usually the ones that are preserved in oil, and then use the oil from that jar to make your pesto with. Um, but I have the most incredible walnut pesto pasta recipe uh, on my website, which is, we absolutely love that in our house. Um, I've had mint pesto, which is delicious with things like feta and olives and lamb. Um, halloumi it's good with, all those sort of things. You can also make a sage pesto. I've seen that where you do half fresh sage, half parsley. Amazing with roast pork. Really, Ooh. really good. Um, so th and I've also had a mushroom pesto. So when we were in Italy, in Tuscany... In the autumn, when you haven't got fresh basil, you haven't got those fresh herbs, they basically take wild mushrooms and they cook them down, get all the water out, and then they add them to a pesto instead of the fresh herbs. Really good. Ooh. We should make that one day. Yeah. That's a good one. Right, so, pasta. So, let's get a pan. So, I was taught, and I learned this the other week, actually, that your pan should never touch the heat when you're making pesto pasta. Okay, oh. so I thought I'd do that today for you. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab a little bit of our starch water. Can we get into the pan here, Emily? Uh, yeah, one second. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so get a ladle and just steal. See how Can you see how cloudy that water is? Yeah. It's got starch in it. So we go for a ladle of that, all right? And then we take our pesto, and that goes into that starch water. That looks so nice and green and just luscious. Oh, be good this. I'm gonna be popular in our house tonight. Mm. So there is our pasta sauce. All it needs is pasta now. So lift your pasta out of the water. Do not put it in a colander and put it into your sauce. Okay? It's very important. Maybe I'll redeem myself with the Italians again. They might like me again after this. Maybe not. 
-hmm. but we'll try. Okay, so that'll do for now. Let's put that to one side. And then all we need to now do is just give that a nice stir. Take your tongs, important that you get your tongs in. So, just take the tongs and lift the pasta up and stir the sauce around. And you see how delicious that looks. I think you're gonna like this one, Emily. Mm. And just lift it up and that is, do you know what? That's it. So we get a nice plate. I'm gonna lift it up. And then I'm gonna turn it like so. Is that my portion? Yeah. <laughs> Will be in a minute. Just give it a little twist. There we go. I'm just going to pop that on there. Can we see that all right? Yeah. Yeah? And then I've got a little bit of pecorino cheese left. So we're going to add some of that. Okay. Touch of olive oil on there. And then what I have got is I've got some tomatoes left over from the fridge. And I'm just going to quickly show you a nice way to serve them. Just cut them in half. Good way to use up the, like a, a proper fridge raider mm. and just get in there and add a bit more nutritional value to your food, really easy. Use up all your leftovers, can only be a good thing. Pip's on her way, she heard the knife, she thinks it's a carrot. It's not Pip, I'm sorry. Hello, snow. Right, in they go. And then we're just going to make the best of these tomatoes. So I've got a little bit of sherry vinegar. Just touching there. A little bit of olive oil. And then this is optional just to make it a little sort of sweet and tangy. A little bit of honey, tiny bit of honey. Don't overdo it. And then I've got some dried herbs, just some oregano. There we go. And a little season. A little bit of black pepper in there, a little bit of salt, not much, that's it. And then you get this kind of freshness now. You get the tomatoes and all we've done by adding vinegar, oil and a touch of honey, we've brought the flavor of the tomatoes out and we've elevated it to the next level. Okay, and it will just taste delicious. So you can just scatter them on. People don't like tomatoes, they can just make it their own. Just add a few tomatoes on there, makes them absolutely delicious. I'm going in again with the pecorino because I think it'll just make it really, really nice. But there you go, a super quick and easy spinach pesto with a little hint of feta for that extra creaminess, served up with some spaghetti and then some cherry tomatoes that have just been glazed up in a little bit of sherry vinegar, honey and olive oil, just to make them taste amazing. Emily, you're gonna have to try this. Oh, I am. Have a little go, try some of that, yeah. see what you think. Go on, Absolutely delicious. What do you think, guys? Really good. Really so, tasty. fresh spinach pesto is a thing. It's delicious, super easy to make. Scan the QR code along the bottom, it'll take you to my website, get the recipe there. Make this pesto, it is delicious. Now, today's recipe is really quick and easy. I thought I'd dive into my archive and find another recipe for you that we filmed a few weeks ago. It is a delicious Greek chicken dish that is stuffed with feta, California prunes and olives. And I tell you, it is absolutely delicious.
download my free app, Peter Sidwell's Kitchen, get everything on there, get it on your iPad, get it on your phone, and I will see you on the next episode.